Hello, this is Greg Wagner, and I'm going to start off my series of Introduction to Blockchain, with just basically the introduction of blockchain. So in this playlist, we'll basically be going over blockchain and some of the technologies, how to program in it. But for today's, we're just going to basically go over the, um, the overview of blockchain. So blockchain is the kind of the basis of Bitcoin, and also Ethereum and stuff like that, so cryptocurrencies for the most part. And so for this, we're going to basically go over the understanding of the basic parts of blockchain, to identify a hash function, uh, be able to explain what a block is, and also understand how blocks become a blockchain. And so we'll be talking about distributed ledgers, um, what a basic structure of a block, and then how you cryptographically link to a previous um, blocks in the transaction chain. And so that's basically what we'll be going over um, for today. So the first step I want to start out is just describing what a distributed ledger is. So a distributed ledger is a set of records that's stored across multiple sites. So for like something like GitHub or like a website, you have a, a central authority, you have a server, and then it's connected to the um, your, you know, your home computer, um, basically that's on the edge as a client. Well, distributed ledgers are peer-to-peer. Everyone in the network can talk to everyone else. There's no central authority, so it's decentralized. And then the data is synchronized across the nodes, so what happens is after every node forms a consensus and then starts updating. And then finally, um, just kind of, as this a blockchain is one type of distributed ledger, but there's also other kinds. You kind of think of an edge, like synchronization tool or edge records is another um, distributed ledger. Mm -hmm. So, to give you an idea of what a distributed ledger is, we have three nodes here, node 1, node 2, and node 3. Um, each contains synchronized data, which is represented by data. As the as, as say node 1 gets new data, all the other nodes will actually have a consensus function as well as kind of a reading function. So say um, node 1 gets new data, but the data in node 2 and node 3 stay the same. And since it's a peer-to-peer -peer network, all the networks can see each other, and then Node two is going to send out a consensus message to all the other nodes in the in the uh, the subscription network or in the network for this um, this um, blockchain in this case. Then, after the consensus is set, if it, if node one node two sees that node one has a longer chain in the blockchain, the new data is going to get transferred over to node two, and then eventually, with another consensus function node three. Node, th um, node 3 will get the data, so the data is at this point all synchronized. And so you have, when you do the consensus functions combined with like adding new data, you get um, basically synchronization across the whole network. And so for blockchain, basically they look for the longest chain, which is all the different transactions and blocks, which is segments of data um, within the blockchain. And so the central unit of a blockchain is the block. And the base of the block contains all information. So each block takes the fundamental data for three, three things. The cryptographic of the previous block. So basically, each block forms a uh, hash or cryptograph, which I'll describe here in a later. But basically, the reason why it's called blockchain is each block gets the cryptograph from the previous block, a timestamp when the transaction happens, and the transaction data, where it came from or when it was uh, founded. So for um, kind of like, for, for basically for blockchain, you have basically two types of transactions. One, you mine a new block or create a new block. That that basically the, tr the transaction data is you don't receive it from anyone; it just kind of generates. Or you transfer date, you transfer a block from one person to another. Also, you can have other data, so a nonce or proof of work. And so for Bitcoin, um, the nonce is basically kind of the what you're mining, what you're trying to mine, trying to fight value to make the correct hash, or some sort of other sort of proof of work. If you're doing like something like a um, smart uh, contracts or some sort of property tracking thing maybe the other data is actually just the property number or something like that so it's tracking how that property moves or how that data moves from the information moves from one person to another who owns it essentially so these things can be in there so the core, the core things that go in there are the cryptograph from previous block data which makes it a blockchain so you're basically chaining together the different blocks the timestamp and then also the transaction data we also have other things and, and tie it in there so give me an example, here's a block. So in the block, the first thing that comes in there is the data. So this would be the nonce or something like that. Then you have the timestamp, and then you have the transaction data, and then you have the previous hash. So the cryptographic from the previous hash. So this is gonna come in 
from the uh, an earlier block. So basically, this is linking together. You you concatenate all this data, and you run it through a hash function. A hash function is basically a one-way function that um, one-way function that returns a string that can't be reversed. It can't be. It makes it immutable. And so you run it through this hash function, this data, and you get a hash. And so a hash function is a one-way function that converts data into a fixed length string. So most um, blockchain software now uses the SHA-256, which is basically a one-way function that re you can put any length of data into it, and it'll return a, um, any string data into it, and it'll return a, a string length of 256 of what looks like random um, hexadecimal numbers, but it's not totally random. It's actually a uh, non-random value. It's a, it's a hash value. It's, if you put this data in, the data timestamp transaction data previous hash into it again, you will get the exact same hash. And this is how it's immutable. So say if the time gets manipulated or the transaction gets manipulated, your hash will not be the same. And so that's what makes it immutable. It, this function here, the hash function, if you put the same data into it every single time, it won't get chained. And then also having the previous hash in there um, makes it so it has a connection to the previous stuff so that you know that the previous data hasn't been modified as well. And so in conclusion, what makes a, a, a blockchain is that it's immutable. So it means you can't be modified. That's what the hash function does. It's decentralized, which means it's at the all on edge devices. There's no central server. It's not sitting in the cloud. It's actually on specific nodes or devices. And it's persistent. Basically, as you get, um, it, it's always there. It doesn't change. You can't be modified. And as it gets larger, and as you get more and more nodes into the network, it becomes more reliable and becomes more likely to likely to be um, to be more secure. So this is the conclusion of my hashed um, hash function or blockchain kind of quick overview. I'll be going into deeper stuff next week. So please make sure to subscribe or like or whatever you want to do with this.